What's up graders? So today's video is going to be about responsive layouts. What are responsive layouts? Well, if you can see here, we have three different types of devices. A smartphone, a tablet, and a desktop. But if you'll notice, all three of them have completely different layouts. However, the key feature about Flutter is that you can have one app for all three devices. So how does it work? Well, you need to have responsive layouts. Depending on the width of the screen, you'll have the columns and rows set up like this. If you define a longer screen, you can have a different setup. And if you have an even wider screen, you can have a different layout and setup. This might create a little bit more code. However, you still only have to write one single app for all three devices. So overall, you're still saving a lot of it. So in this video, we'll be using two different types of responsive layout techniques, one using media query and one using layout builder. And the end application will look something like this. So you have two columns. And then when you get smaller, let's say a phone size, they'll jump into rows. This is very the, as simple as it can get. And um, we'll show you how to do these two. And you can expand on it however much you want. Let's add more rows, add more columns. And yeah, let's get into the code. OK, so we're going to start off with the base app that looks like this. Nothing to it. It's a center widget with hello and the app bar with responsive layouts. So let's start. The one thing we want is the width of the screen, right? If the screen is too wide, we want to make sure the columns get set up. If the screen is too thin, then we were get, we're going to want to display them in rows. So using media query of the context that we're in, we want to figure out the width of the screen. That's how we get that. We can also do the height. Height is the same way. Can't type today. Dot size dot height. So with this, we have both the height and the width of the screen that we're using. So given that, we can set up a well conditional display. So if our width is greater than 500, 500 pixels, then we want to show, let's say, big display. Otherwise, we want to show small display. These aren't defined yet, but we will return them from a function. So widget, big display, and widget, widget small display. From the big display, We'll want to return, what do we want? A row with two columns. What? Don't want to work? Children, there we go. With two columns. Text called column one and column with children and text column two. And both of these will want to, all right, so that should show up already, column one and two. That doesn't look as nice as what we had before, but that's just because we want to do expanded and wrap this, wrap this in expanded. And then, and then we also want to do main axis alignment, main axis alignment dot center. Let's paste the same thing here. And now it should look right there. Okay, we got two columns. But when we make it, when we make it smaller, we'll notice it doesn't display anything. That's because it's going to the 
small display function, which we haven't done anything with yet. The small display will look the exact same with one, one key difference. So this will have column and these will be rows. Row one, row two. So let's see. There we go. Simple as that. That's pretty easy. But then there's another method you could do the same thing with. It's called Layout Builder. I think Layout Builder is the better way to do it because it's a little cleaner. But um, it's up to your choice, whatever you want to do. So let's say go to Layout. Let's make a new page in here called layout layout page dot dart. Inside the layout page, you want um, import material material dot dart. Come on, give it to me. All right, whatever. We don't need it then. STF stateful layout. Page. And here, then we'll go import the material dot dart. Let's create a scaffold with an app bar title called Layout Builder. And then let's also set up a body with um, the layout builder class. And then builder context constraints. And there we go. If constraints dot max width is greater than 500. We want to do one thing else, we want to do something else. So this whole section right here is pretty much the equivalent of the statement we had over here. If it's wider than 500, display that. If it's bigger than display the other thing. We can actually just copy these functions to the layout page. So layout builder. So if it's bigger than that, we want the big display. It's the small one, we want the small display. And also bring in both of the functions here too. This isn't the cleanest architecture, but that's not what we're here for. So that's, we just want to make it work. Now we need semicolons, not commas. And now to get to that page, we can put a button in, let's put a button in the app bar. We have title and then leading widget. Let's put a raise button on pressed go to layout. And in here, let's do navigator dot push context. Material page route, builder context, layout page. If you want, if you don't understand what I'm doing here, I have a video on navigation. That's not what I wanted. So make sure to check that out. This basically just pushes. Another page on top. What I do? Come on. Okay, there we go. That should bring it in. Right? Perfect. So let's see if the app works. All right, we are on the first page. I have two columns, and they turn into rows. 
perfect. And we go to the second page. It's broken. Nice. Layout builder. Builder build functions must never return null. Hmm. Let's see where we have a problem then. And the problem is because we're not returning these. If we return them, then it should work. Let's hope. Responsive layouts and layout builder. Okay, perfect. And then we get smaller and it pops over to rows, expands to columns. So that's that's pretty much it with the different types of responsive layouts. I know this is very basic, but you can expand it to be however much you want. You can check the max width. You can check the max height, minimum width, minimum height, anything you want. With when you create a MIDI query, you can also have a orientation. If you want to learn more about orientation, let's see orientation there. If you want to know more about orientation, I suggest you check out the video. That's going to be linked in the top right by the card right here. Uh, if you don't click that, it's going to be in the description as well. That video will also go over media query and layout builder and other ways as well. So if you want more explanation, make sure to check it out. And that's pretty much it. So this code will be on GitHub. If you have any questions or anything, make sure to leave it in the comments. I'll respond to them as quick as I can. Make sure to like, subscribe and share the video and thanks for